Good morning, everybody. Welcome to my kitchen. And I'm Bill from um, HD Supply and Premier Faucet Technical Support. I'm the uh, guy that a lot of times you'll email or talk to on the phone in terms of warranty processes and um, technical problems that you would have with the Premier Faucet. I had a uh, call recently in which an individual uh, homeowner called me and said that he couldn't get the mounting ring on his 3577634 faucet. And um, I was kind of stumped. I didn't have one here at the, ho at the house. I did not put one together. So today we're going to take one apart, put one together, and uh, see exactly what it is that makes this one a little bit different uh, than most faucets are making them a little more difficult or challenging to put together. What I usually do is videos on problem faucets or faucets that we have problems with the most, but um, we're going to just work with this one today. So uh, we're going to start with a, a disassembly of taking one apart if you've got a cartridge or a bad aerator or you need to take one apart for whatever reason. And we can uh, put that, we'll do this video for that, but also we'll talk about the diverter area and the mounting ring. So um, the, the aerator is self-explanatory. There's a flat side on either side of it for an adjustable wrench that you can use. It should just be barely more than hand tight. It screws right out. You can see that it goes like that, like that. It screws right back in. And once again, just more than a little more than hand tight if possible. You don't want it to uh, get corroded and fused through calcium uh, deposits that are in your water. Um, taking the handle off, you would take your red and blue in temperature indicator or index button out. Use a 2.5 millimeter hex head wrench. I've turned the handle all the way back and move it a little to the side so you don't risk scratching the, uh, the spout on the faucet when you loosen it and only loosen it enough to get it off. Don't take it all the way out would be my recommendation because if you take it all the way out, you can see how deep that is and trying to get that little hex head screw back in there, it could be a problem. The next thing that would come off is the bonnet cap. So the bonnet nut would just come off. It uh, generally is only hand tight. Now here's where you might run into a little bit of a problem. There's a chrome or a silver stainless threaded piece here. It may be in there very tightly. If it is, you might need to use a pair of channel locks. I always keep uh, some, some uh, pump wrench with me, uh, as, as most plumbers do so that you can span any size nut that you would run into on a job. Um, this one was going to be, is going to be a little more tight than hand, high hand tight, and it is what holds the cartridge in. So that would screw out. Now, if there's going to be times where it's screwed in there with the bonnet cap, as you can see, so if you take the bonnet cap off and the cartridge is bare, you would, I would recommend you take this piece out first of, of the bonnet cap. And you can see it's got, um, a, it's got uh, like notches in there and, and, and you want to make sure that uh, that piece comes out and that it also is able to screw back in. You don't want to go too hard on it with a wrench if you have to use a wrench because you don't want to mess up the threads to where the bonnet cap can't go back on. The cartridge would come out, and as you can see, there's two nipples there on the cartridge. There's also inside the, uh, the faucet itself, there is uh, two, two holes in there for the cartridge, so there's only one way for the cartridge to go in. And then you would take your, your I call it the hold down nut, and you'd put that in, give it a little twist. I wouldn't suggest going more, much more than hand tight is you just want it to make sure it doesn't leak water. And screw the bonnet nut back on. Gonna have to leave enough threads for the bonnet nut to catch. Ah, there we go. So what can happen is the spout here in this instance slid down a little bit and took the uh, threads with it. So just make sure that you keep the, uh, the threads pressed down. 
and then the bonnet nut will go back on. Want to be sure you don't cross thread it. Get a good secure fit. Put your handle back on. Put in the square notch on the cartridge. Once again, moving that out of the way. Put your wrench in. And tighten it down. Put your index button back on. And if you're just changing the cartridge out, now you're ready to uh, turn the water on. Uh, what I'd always recommend also is while you have the cartridge out, turn uh, the hot water on just a little bit and the cold water on just a little bit, uh, all, you know, one behind the other, and let them run for just a moment or two to clean out any particulate that you might have in your water lines. And what can that can do is it can save your cartridge because if particulate gets in there and rubs again on the ceramic discs, it'll score those and it will cause a drip. And also it will help keep your aerator from needing to be cleaned out on a more regular basis. So what we ran into with uh, the customer that we were working with earlier was that he says, I can't get the mounting kit over the mounting nut over the um, diverter. And I said, well, you've got to take the diverter off. He said, there's no way to do that. I'm like, okay, but there actually is. There is a, um, there's a tab that sticks up the back side of the, the diverter and it's on a slide. So you would push that out and then it's gonna take a bit of a tug, but you would pull the diverter off. And at that point, you would run the mounting nuts up through. And you're going to need this for a uh, one hole or three hole application. So, you know, this would have to be, have to be accomplished. Get the hose is sorted out a little bit. And then run it on. And when you get it up close, you will tighten these up with a Phillips head screwdriver to, and what I would do is I would torque them like you would do if you were changing the tire on a car so that uh, you don't have it sitting cattywampus on top of your uh, kitchen deck, all right? And then once you get that all done, well, and I, what I suspect is also that you would need to put uh, this washer, I would put the rubber gasket on first and then the metal washer on as it comes out of the sink and that way you have a good base for these screws to tighten up onto the sink. Then you will notice, if you look closely, you'll notice that the, the holes are two different sizes. The bigger size will not go into that smaller hole. So you would need to make sure that you align the, the uh, diverter holes up correctly so that they fit back down in and then you would just Come back with your clip and it clips back on and you can see how it, the tab sticks out of the back of the diverter and it'll be right there okay all right so uh, we've got it all hooked up and then all we have to do is uh, hook our our spray hose onto the diverter. In this particular instance, it's a screw-on application. You know, we have clip-ons as well. And we also have single hole application mounting. So you would take this, sit it down on top of the kitchen sink, boom, then put the faucet body through it. There are notches on the bottom of the faucet body that would line up with notches in the single hole plate. If you're going to go with a three-hole application, well, 
Once again, there's notches on the base plate. They match up with the notches right there on the, um, so what you would do first is you would put, what you would do first is you would actually put these screws, they look like they're actually closet bolts, but you would use these in the slide so that you it would slide to adjust to the size holes that you have. And then you would put this on and you would tighten these up on the outside so that your uh, base plate, you would use these so that your base plate doesn't curl up when you tighten down in the middle. And then everything will sit level and you'd be ready to go. So if you have any questions, the easiest way to get a hold of me is support underscore premier faucet at homedepot.com. Um, that may change in the near future, but uh, right now is support underscore premier faucet at homedepot.com. Always happy to hear from you. Uh, if you know the model number of your faucet, please include that with uh, ship to street address and a phone number. If you don't know the model number, I would ask that you would send me a picture of your faucet and also a picture of your faucet with the handle off so that we can identify which version of whatever model it is that you have. Hope this uh, was informative for you today, and I'll look forward to uh, another video soon. Thanks.